Christ the Redeemer is the Art Deco statue of Jesus Christ. In 2007, it was declared as a new seven wonder of the world. But do you know where is this located? This beautiful, humongous statue is located in Brazil, which is in South America. South America is a continent of cultural diversity and unique landscape. So how did this continent come into existence? As we have already studied in our previous lessons, earlier, that is millions of years ago, there was a supercontinent named Pangaea. After the breaking down of Pangaea into different land masses, the continents came into existence. So, we can see here in the picture how Pangaea, that is the supercontinent, is like a jigsaw puzzle in which all the continents are stuck together, while there is a super ocean called Panthalassa. So, when Pangaea started breaking up into smaller fragments of landmass, eventually it led to the continents that we see today. So, around 150 million years ago, South America, which was a part of Gondwana land along with Africa, Australia and Antarctica, that is right here. Then around 100 million years ago, the continent of South America got separated from the Gondwana landmass and finally, after many years, this is how the continent looks today. So now there are seven continents on our planet out of which South America is also one of them. However, before the continent was discovered by the explorers, it is believed that the continent was inhabited by the Incas people. So Incas are people who belong to a very old civilization named the Incas civilization. So you see on this map that the Inca Empire was spread over a vast region in the continent of South America. It was believed that this old civilization was a very advanced civilization and the modern heirs of the Incas still exist or still inhabit this particular place. Here we also have a glimpse of the Inca Empire which shows how well developed the civilization was hinting at how advanced the civilization was even though it was one of the oldest human civilizations. South America derived its name from the very famous explorer named Amerigo Vespucci. Now Amerigo Vespucci made a number of expeditions to the continent of South America after which the continent was named after him. However, credit is also given to another important European explorer. He is Columbus. So Christopher Columbus is the person who discovered the new world, right? If you remember from the lesson of North America, we talked about how the new world was discovered by Christopher Columbus. So Christopher Columbus is another important and celebrated explorer when it comes to the discovery of the continent of South America. Now only to honor his discovery, Columbus Day is celebrated each year on October 11 in America. Now let us see where the continent of South America is located, right? So if we divide the world map into four equal parts with the help of the prime meridian that divides the map into two equal halves, that is the Western Hemisphere and the Eastern Hemisphere. And with the help of the equator that again divides the world map into two halves, that is Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. So if you look at the map, we see that South America completely lies on the Western Hemisphere and almost entirely in the Southern Hemisphere, while a certain portion of the continent also lies in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, the continent of South America is the fourth largest continent in size after Asia, Africa and North America. However, it is the fifth largest continent if population is taken into consideration. So as per size, it is the fourth largest continent and as per population, it is the 
fifth largest continent of the world. Now let us look at the exact location of the continent of South America by looking at the latitudinal and longitudinal extent. So we see that the continent of South America extends from 35 degree west to 81 degree west. That is its longitudinal extent. However, if we look at the latitudinal extent, we see that the continent extends from 12 degree north to 55 degree south. So this was the latitudinal and longitudinal extent of the continent which tells us that the continent lies entirely in the western hemisphere and almost in the southern hemisphere while a little portion that is the northern part of the continent lies in the northern hemisphere. Now if we look at the continent we see that just like North America even South America is surrounded by water bodies almost on all sides. We see that on the right side of the continent we have the Atlantic Ocean and on the left we have the Pacific Ocean. While to the south of the continent we have the Southern Ocean and to the north of the continent we have the Caribbean Sea. However, we can also see that the continent of South America is attached to another landmass through a narrow stretch of land. Now we know for the fact that North America lies to the north of the continent of South America. So we see that South America is connected to North America with a narrow stretch of land. But what is this stretch of land known as? So we can see here that South America is connected to North America through this narrow stretch of land known as the Isthmus of Panama in the Caribbean Sea. Therefore, Isthmus of Panama is what connects the continent of South America and North America and more specifically the countries of Colombia of South America and Panama of North America are the connecting countries of the two continents. So, the South American continent is connected to North America by the Isthmus of Panama. Now, if you remember from the previous lesson, we learnt about the meaning of Isthmus. However, just for a revision, we have the definition of Isthmus here as well. So, what is an Isthmus? An Isthmus is a narrow piece of land joining two large pieces of land and separating two large water bodies. So here the Isthmus of Panama is separating the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean while it is joining two large land masses that is South America and North America. So before we proceed with the lesson, could you help me answer this simple question? Which landmass connects North America to South America? Is it Isthmus of Suez, Isthmus of Panama, or the Adams Bridge, or the Karelian Isthmus? Yes, I think you've already guessed it right. The correct answer is the Isthmus of Panama. So the Isthmus of Panama is the narrow stretch of land that connects the two continents that is North America and South America. Now we looked at the Isthmus of Panama in the northern part of the continent. Let's zoom into the southern part where we have the Cape Horn and the Drake Passage. So what is the Drake Passage? So the Drake Passage is a water body. So it is the water body that separates the continent of South America from the continent of Antarctica. The continent of South America is separated from the continent of Antarctica by the Drake Passage. So the Drake Passage as you can see is a water body separating the two land masses, right? Now it is believed that the Drake Passage is a place where the ship can make the most treacherous voyages. This place is believed to have very strong and dangerous currents and the waves here rise up to 40 feet height. So the Drake Passage to the south of the continent is a stretch of water body that separates the continent from Antarctica. Let us again zoom into the southern part of the continent. We see there is a group of islands called Terra del Fuego, an archipelago that is at the southernmost tip of the continent and it is shared by Chile and Argentina. 
So we just saw in the previous video that Terra del Fuego is a group of islands or an archipelago at the southernmost tip of the continent. Now Cape Horn marks the southernmost tip of the continent of South America. So while Terra del Fuego lies at the southernmost tip of the continent, the southernmost tip is marked by Cape Horn. Now near the archipelago of Terra del Fuego, we have the Strait of Magellan. So the Strait of Magellan is a narrow stretch of water body that acts as a natural passage between Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. So this narrow stretch of water body acts as a natural passage between the two oceans that is Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Ocean. Now why do we call it the Strait of Magellan? Now the Strait of Magellan derives its name or was named after the European explorer named Ferdinand Magellan. We have a picture of Ferdinand Magellan here. So Ferdinand Magellan was a European explorer who on his voyage around the world discovered that the world is round and not flat. So earlier people used to believe that the earth is flat and if we go very end of the land surface on the earth then we'll drop off. But however after the voyage around the world by Ferdinand Magellan it was discovered that the world is round. So coming back to the Strait of Magellan. The Strait of Magellan is named after Ferdinand Magellan only after he made a voyage. So the water body here that acts as a natural passage between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean is a strait that was named after the European explorer after his voyage around the world. So in this lesson we were able to understand that South America is a continent that lies entirely in the Western Hemisphere and almost in the Southern Hemisphere. Right? We also understood that the continent is almost surrounded by water bodies on all sides. However, it is connected to the continent of North America at the northern portion through the Isthmus of Panama. While it is separated from the continent of Antarctica at the southern portion by the Drake Passage. We further learned that there is a natural passage at the southern portion of the continent that joins two oceans, Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Ocean and that is the Strait of Magellan. In our next lesson, we will be learning more about the physical divisions of the continent of South America. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.